Pepsi and Cola in India will stumble now. Mukesh Ambani's soft drink company Campa Cola will rule the market soon. These are the rumors, but what is the truth? As per reports in 2023, the revenue of Indian non-alcoholic soft drink is 8.85 billion. It's expected to increase by 5.40 percent per year. A lion's share of this market is being ruled by PepsiCo and Coca-Cola company. As you already know, both of these are such huge companies. Once 90 percent of the market was ruled by these two, Mukesh Ambani has now rolled up his sleeves to compete with them. What does Ambani actually mean by this? And now, what is this Campa Cola? And before we move to the topic, please consider subscribing our channel if you are new to our family. And please like this video if you can. Let's go to the video. Coca-Cola is a big MNC that owns more than 200 drinks like Cola, Sprite, Fanta, etc. Most of the soft drinks we see daily comes under Coca-Cola company, and PepsiCo is their direct rival in the world market. They own brands such as Pepsi, Mirinda, Seven Up, Lay's, etc. Coca-Cola's market capitalization is more than 250 billion US dollars, whereas PepsiCo has more than 240 billion USD. That means both of them together rules the world market. There were a lot of marketing wars between them to know who comes out on top. Even though Coca-Cola stands a feet above the other one, Pepsi is really competing with them. No other company could conquer the heights they are already in. They are ruling the Indian soft drink market like they rule the world market. As per the stats of Nielsen data that came out in 2010, both of them together rules more than 90% of Indian soft drink market. They bought so many brands that turned out to be successful here. Anyway, these companies reap all the profits. Foreign companies got into India not so long after its independence. Coca-Cola was the most prominent among them. Coca-Cola came into India in 1950s. A company named Pure Drink Company was assigned to produce and distribute its products. At that time too, Coca-Cola's recipe was a secret. Also, Coca-Cola was owned by foreign companies itself. But sooner rather than later, India introduced a new strategy. In 1977, as per such a strategy, foreign companies couldn't work in India completely. The important factor that provoked them was they should convert at least 60% of their shares to Indian companies. Then only they'll be allowed to establish here. Moreover, they should reveal their secret recipe to the government. Both of these things weren't acceptable at all by Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola was ready to shut themselves from Indian market in 1977. They withdrew completely from Indian market. Coca-Cola was active in India for almost 25 years. So we know that they would have marketed them very well and also done everything that could make Indians use their products more. And they created a fan base for soft drinks. All these happened within a span of 25 years. A major portion of Indians were turned into soft drink fans, and their exit from the Indian market was seen as an opportunity by Indian ventures. They entered the market with an aim to fetch the market that was created by Cola. In the same year, Limca, Thumbs Up, and Campa Cola gained their share. Campa Cola was owned by Pure Drink Company, and we all know what they were doing earlier. So they were already aware of what should they do, like marketing, distribution, and all that jazz. So Campa Cola turned out to be a big success. Campa Cola projected nationality to sell their product. Their tagline also pointed the same, which was the great Indian taste. Their advertisement was the first TV ad to feature Salman Khan for the first time. They already marketed their products with bold letters and also had a drink named Campa Orange. Rush was an another brand which was their only opponent in the Indian market at that time, and obviously their sales shot up. Many strategies of Campa Cola were successful. Their distribution strategies with the tag of nationality was also a success. The company was setting up new large manufacturing units in Mumbai and Delhi. And good sales were also going on. When we observe the period between 1977 and 1990, even though Limca and Thumbs Up were vast accomplishments, they were unable to outline Campa Cola's achievements. Or Campa Cola used to be the ruler of the Indian carbonated soft drink market. However, in 1991, a crucial event occurred in Indian history. In 1999, P.V. Narasimha Rao was the Prime Minister of India, and Manmohan Singh was the Finance Minister of India, who implemented globalization and liberalization policies in India. This gave foreign companies the chance to operate in India with ease. Many firms arrived in India. 
Meanwhile, known alcoholic brands in India were aware that Coca-Cola and PepsiCo would soon join the Indian market. It was not so long before Coca-Cola entered the Indian market with a remarkable vigor in 1993. We are aware that a company that has achieved great success in western countries and generate massive earnings will not enter India as a typical corporation. At one point, Coca-Cola left the Indian market after creating a thirst for soft drinks among Indians from 1950 to 1977. Indian businesses however took advantage of that space left by Coca-Cola and earned a significant profit until 1993. So Coca-Cola definitely does not arrived in a fragmented market. During that time many Indian companies were expanding. Coca-Cola came to the market and immediately purchased Limca and Thumbsup. However, Campacola remained as an independent company, not selling itself to Coca-Cola or Pepsi. By 1999, PepsiCo had also demonstrated significant strength in India. But things changed in 2000. Indians started consuming soft drinks when eating out. As a result, there was more competitions in the sector. Consequently, Campacola's market fell apart in front of Coca-Cola and it gradually vanished over time. Later the Delhi plan was shut down and the company incurred losses resulting in the company ceasing operations entirely however campacola which vanished in the early 2000s was purchased by mukesh ambani india's wealthiest billionaire for 22 crore rupees he aims to capture the indian carbonated soft drink market because a successful billionaire who has emerged in so many business will not simply create a soft drink company his objective is to surpass pepsico and coca cola now the question is how can he defeat such large companies this is where we must understand mukesh ambani's business intelligence it's not been so long that we have witnessed the emergence of jio from a void that has completely dominated the indian market at that time all of the other minor telecom companies had collapsed only a few firms remain operational today so he could quickly develop a soft drink called jio drink or devise a strategy for it then why is he choosing to go with campacola there is no other reason for it campacola holds a special place in the indian psyche it evokes nostalgia additionally it's a well known brand among indians known as the great indian taste so if you introduce a new brand called jio drink or something else you will not receive the same response from indians so i need not mention the importance of indian nationalism especially when shri narendra modi is the prime minister of india and ambani is the wealthiest billionaire in india Secondly, Jio Mart's A to Z product service is available throughout India. Jio Mart delivers more than 6 lakh products daily in 250 cities. Furthermore, the Reliance Group owns more than 10,000 retail stores. Another challenge is that Reliance Industries, a company deeply ingrained in the Indian market, has a favorable report with other merchants who retail Reliance products. This indicates that it won't be too challenging for Ambani to sell a brand that is connected to some extent to Indian patriotism. which is deeply entrenched among indians it is not just his stores or related stores or jio marts that will undertake this initiative another challenge arises if ambani decided to eliminate cola and pepsi from his retail stores and only stock ambani's products will it be profitable for him initially jio also incurred losses but later when he realized he could turn it into a profit he executed it even at loss However it's a challenge if you don't stock other brand products that people desire in your retail stores it will impact the brand's reputation another concern is that the losses caused by the removal of these products can be offset by selling campacola otherwise removing other brands will turn out to be a loss for the company therefore other brands are unlikely to be ousted from reliance stores anytime soon moreover nationalism might work but it's uncertain how nostalgia will work because campacola was extensively promoted in the 1980s people who were at least 10 years old that time have consumed soft drinks besides people didn't have much money back then even if we consider 10 year old at that time they would be at least 50 years old today the soft drink market obviously doesn't cater to such older people its target customers are always young not so old and you already know that there is no significant nostalgic feeling among youth people towards campacola because they don't know campacola so it's foolish to assume that campacola will triumph because of the nostalgia there is no chance for that however if the product quality is good it won't be difficult for ambani to succeed because reliance alone has the marketing network for that now what we must comprehend from this video is that an indian company has entered a highly profitable sector in india thus the company has to compete with two of the world's most prominent and successful companies abroad now let's see what ambani's business strategies will yield let's meet again with an another interesting topic till then bye bye